is to set a steady timetable. Is that, sir, uh, and all the teachers would uh, really feel now because of this pandemic, the whole, uh, the, uh, the entire charter of the, you know, the activities which the students used to do has been disturbed. There is no time to when they are getting up, there was no time and they will just, you know, sit and study uh, during the classes. And after that, you know, they are hooked on onto their screens. Uh, majorly not studying, but maybe, you know, all to the games or other YouTubes and other things. Uh, so these are the points which have actually, you know, distracted the students. So to bring them back and to channelize the time, because the, we have a big time constraint now, uh, knowing that we have approximately three months left for the examinations, maybe lesser. Uh, because we have yet to get a date sheet, if at all we are going to have uh, the term to exam. So to set a timetable for the study timetable for the students, I feel is of utmost importance. And uh, the teachers uh, should actually uh, take care of that. And here I feel the uh, class teachers play a very major role uh, in setting the study timetables here. And uh, also we have another stakeholder which plays a crucial role in this aspect is the parents. So the teachers along with the parents, uh, you know, to work together uh, to uh, ensure that the children are following this timetable. And, uh, you know, we are having a constructive study being done. The time is being used constructively. Uh, it is. It should not happen uh, that they are sitting through and you know they are not understanding anything. Because right now I had uh, several discussions with our grade eleven, grade twelve students, as well as grade ten students. So uh, they had shared that, ma'am, we are sitting for three hours, and after three hours uh, we go back. To, uh, you know, maybe to the first page of the chapter, nothing goes into our heads. Because, uh, you know, there is either distraction or the time which they are spending is not at all uh, scheduled or channelized properly. So the, uh, the teachers are going to play a very important role in setting the study timetable to balance out their timetable, maybe a, a difficult subject with a lighter subject. And uh, also it has to be individualized for every student. That's what I feel. We cannot have a general timetable for the entire class. So the teacher has to go into the detail, have a discussion with the child, see their entire schedule of the day and fix a special timetable for every child and take along the parent because the child is approximately, you know, for three to four hours with us here. But we need the parents to monitor the child for rest of 18 hours or 20 hours, which are there at the home. So uh, that's one of the major aspects. The next uh, uh, aspect I feel is the when we are, uh, we all have gone through the term one uh, examination uh, and we have seen because we all were doing the evaluation. We have seen the output of this exam. So where we really need to introspect and see where our children have gone wrong. So this is where we have the error analysis, which is going to help us to find out the areas which we really need to pay attention on, which we really need to harp on, which we really need to see where we are lacking. Either we are lacking in the communication of that particular topic or a subtopic, or the children are finding it difficult so this error analysis of the question paper will really help the teachers to understand their subject and to understand where we need to work upon. Then after error analysis, another major aspect which we follow in our schools is to identify the slow learners. I'm sure the other schools also must be doing. So uh, along with identifying the gifted learners, we really also need to look after and to identify the slow learners to work out a different charter, different uh, curriculum for the both set of children. 
along with the slow learners we also need to look after the gifted learners because invariably these are the two uh, major chunk of our students which we are actually paying attention more and invariably we see we are paying more attention to the slow learners but also uh, though i have not highlighted here but i really want to bring it out that we also need to look after the gifted learners because we take them for granted and we think okay that child okay the child will do on their own let me just focus on my slow learners so uh, we really need to look into that and uh, you know this this is the both set of children which really needs our attention to give them uh, what they need like gifted learners they will be needing more of competency based more uh, questions they'll be needing maybe worksheets based on those kind of questions assertion reasoning questions or uh, you know uh, application questions we need to give them those kind of practices more whereas we have slow learners here where we need to actually see how to go about it because we know these children will not be go able to go ahead or and do and complete the entire 100% syllabus and give you a good result so to get a good result after all at the end of the day along with the holistic learning the marks they play a big role uh, in the student's life because this is what helps them uh, to you know secure a seat in a college of their choice and in a course of their choice so uh, to make them score better in their examinations and eventually get a better education further in their lives we feel that this is to be uh, really emphasized upon so the slow learners which we feel and we also practice in our school uh, that we give them selective portions to study we work upon them uh, separately uh, and uh, the portions which are given generally i'm sure all the teachers and the principals here uh, we all know that there are certain topics which we are sure there would be questions so prepare them for those topics instead of the entire 100% of syllabus this is one practice which we follow in our school and i thought i should share uh, in this platform another uh, measure which we do is a lot of hand holding that is we have a mentor and a mentee uh, groups so generally after the first examination we are able to identify the children who require a bit more hand holding uh, it may not necessarily be slow learners it uh, also includes the children who are finding it difficult maybe to adjust to the school or to the classroom or they are having other difficulties so here also one of our very major aspect as uh, uh sir was also discussing earlier is the social interaction which these children have missed out uh that is a major part which we really need to work upon and here the mentor mentee relationship in the school helps them a lot so what we do and uh, what we share in our school is that uh, we identify the children who require additional attention uh, who require uh, separate hand you know Uh, maybe classes they require hand holding they require somebody to listen to hear to what they have to say so we club four to five children uh, under one teacher who would be the mentor of them and this mentor teacher keeps a record of how the child is performing what is happening in their home what kind of environment the child is having at home how many people are there home at their home that does the child has uh, you know their own a uh, study area or a separate room to themselves or not what is the psychological issue what are the friends uh, that the child is uh, spending time with so all these things when they are taken considered and we take into consideration we work upon it the teacher uh, who is the mentor looks after the mentee she interacts with the other subject teachers keeps a track how the child is doing uh, the subject teachers they would uh, give separate set of questions or different set of work to the child which the child can do easily 
which actually helps to instill more confidence in the child. So this uh, connect, communicate, collaborate, circulate, cultivate, and celebrate. This is the end of this mentor mentee relationship where we have seen we as a person, this is my personal experience, which I'm sharing. We've done it with so many children who were otherwise, they were very good, very intelligent, but they went into certain kind of depression or they were not interested. And it is just this mentor mentee relationship, which they we started in our school and uh, it really helped them to score wonderful grades, wonderful marks. And they are doing exceptionally well now in their uh, college and uh, in their further studies. The next further way ahead, uh, which we feel is uh, we need to make these children practice time management. Till now we were practicing and teaching them how to answer the MCQs. So now this whole process of unlearning and relearning has to be introduced and we have to bring the students back for writing the paper, writing a subjective examination. So the time management here is going to play a crucial, crucial role. And uh, we know, uh, we really don't know the time management, uh, the kind of question paper. We are yet to receive a proper sample papers because we've seen now during this examination also CBSE has altered uh, certain um, in certain subjects there were alteration in the question paper also so we need to make them sorry, prepare sorry for, sorry for uh, the intervention uh, sir. Can yeah i'll do yeah. that sir. Uh, quickly i'll just go through the browse uh, so the next is uh, the we prepare the half study groups uh, with the students and uh, then we have remedial classes we should i'm sure we all are doing that then also, uh, you know, we, we are making a separate timetable and a separate portion, as I was just discussing with the slow learners. This peer learning is one thing which uh, we all know, uh, which really, really helps the students. They may not understand what the teacher is, uh, you know, uh, carrying on in the class, but definitely what their peer is telling, they would be able to do it, uh, you know, wonderfully well. And the next one is, you know, go ahead with the doubt clearing classes uh these are the most crucial points uh, which i would say and of course uh, to ensure that they are healthy and stress free uh, have regular sessions with the counselors we should emphasize the children should have a balanced diet eat a lot of greens and fruits meditate uh, here yoga and meditation classes which all the schools are having as a part of hpe uh, really helps them to calm down their mind especially during the examinations and their uh, preparation time. And yes, uh, last but not the least, uh, detox from social media. So uh, these are a few points which I wanted to share uh, with the esteemed panel and all the uh, members here of the education fraternity. Uh, that would be all from my side, sir. Thank you so much for giving me this opportunity. I'll stop sharing now. Yeah, thank you. Uh... Thank you. So uh, that was a very good presentation. And uh, though the time was very short, you made it uh, very clear on uh, as a leader, how you could be very responsive and uh, uh, responsible. And you also looked into the inclusive part, inclusive learning, personal learning, and uh, I think you also talked about how you would also like to address the the bright students. Yes. So some technical thing has come up. Yeah, it is okay. Uh, so uh, you you had uh, talked about uh, the bright students. I mean, how you could address them as well. Yes. These gifted students, as you said, can also trigger to, to make us all think how we could modify our strategy uh, because they give us certain inputs <clears throat> which, uh, which also will help us to modify our strategy. So thank you. So nice of you to have uh, made a, such an elaborate presentation. And uh, uh, 
thank you so much. Now, thank you, I sir. would request uh, Mrs. Nehalata Vijay Kumar to take the floor. Thank you, sir. Thanks for giving me the opportunity. Can I stop, uh, start sharing it? Yes. I think you have to allow me to share. Yeah. Ma'am, you are one of the co-hosts. So I think you should be able to. Yeah, thank you. Can you see the slide? Can you all see the slide? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma ma we can. Thank yeah, we can thank see. you. Yeah, good evening, one and all. I think it's been nearly two years uh, since we first heard about coronavirus. We have slowly uh, learned to accept its existence and safeguard ourselves from it to the extent possible. But this period was challenging, of course, to say the least. And in this world of uncertainties, it is important that we recognize and understand the reality of what and where we are today. The normal we know ceased to exist and the complete transition to the new normal will take time. Taking this into account, it is vital that the relationship between parents, teachers and students is coherent this will help us to prioritize the student's well-being and acclimatize the current uh, situation. Hence, let us work towards creating a congenial and supportive environment where the students are challenged to strive for success. And this starts with us acknowledging the fact that COVID diversity gap exists. And we must try to narrow down this gap by ensuring that the teaching learning strategies are inclusive for all students. So with this introduction, I would like to share my uh, slides. I think most of the points have been discussed by Dr. Upasana, but still I would like, like to share some of the aspects which I would like to emphasize on. Now, for any academic success, I think we need uh, three main roles here. One is the teacher, who needs to excel and we need the parental support and of course the students willingness if all these are there interconnected interrelated interdependent i think surely we may lead to this academic success now for this academic success of the students i think we need to have a combination or the interaction between the parent and teacher so that it has a positive impact on the child. Now, what are the ways in which you can find or you can see that there's a positive impact on the child? Something common that you find between the teacher and the student, that is, they need to communicate, they need to empathize, they need to understand the child, they need to cooperate with the child as a teacher, as, as well as the parent's role. Then we need to be proud, and our support has to be consistent and try to come out with the rea reality and help them to become more responsible. And of course, give some kind of a pat at the back saying that you have done your best and they feel satisfied and respect their views and express your love to them, appreciate wherever it is required give them the support, always help them to think positive, encourage them and have fun with them also and have a friendly approach. Surely it will reflect on the well-being of the child. So this is what we need. That is the relationship between the parent and the teacher. Now, how to prepare the CBSE grade 10th and 12th uh, exam? So initially, we need to help the students to set their goals. Why? Because it's the new term and new challenges, isn't it? 
So we need to give them some kind of a booster dose so that they are able to take up the new term as well as the new challenges that they need to face. Now you find that the term two is totally a different uh, approach. It's more of subjective. So we need to guide them on those lines. More of written work is there. So we have to give them rigorous practice in writing because they have lost the skill of writing. So we need to give them ample uh, written tests so that they are able to develop the skill of writing. Of course, some of the points uh, Madam uh, Doctor has already mentioned, but still I would just like to uh, uh, mention a few. Plan and prepare for the exam. And they need to get familiarized with the term to syllabus and examination pattern. How it is, why it is assessed. And they need to develop a good study plan. And they need to be well equipped with the study material, be it subject wise, it can be notes, chapter wise question bank, question papers, worksheets, numerical problems. I think there's no dearth for such resources. I think the teachers can guide the students to find out these uh, resource material so that they can be uh, well versed with the content across all subjects. And the other important thing is they need to be focused, specific, and they need to break into achievable targets. Instead of taking a huge chunk, which they are not able to digest, let them take in bits and pieces so that it's easy for them to digest the concept that they want to understand. Now, coming to this particular point, how to teach students to be resilient in learning. We need to encourage the child to take up challenges. So that is possible when yeah, we... Uh, request the participants to mute the mic. May I have your cooperation, please? Thank you. Yeah. Snehalata, madam, please unmute yourself and speak. Uh, got. Okay, thank you. So, coming back to this point, how to teach students to be resilient in learning? That means we need to encourage the child to take up challenges. Now, this can happen only when they are into that challenge. So initially they may have some kind of hesitance. So that can be uh, overcome by the constant support of the teacher. So the child will be confused. It's good the child getting confused. And later you find that the, the child will put in some more effort with the constant guidance of the teacher. And he comes out happy saying that he has achieved. So this we call it as the learning pit. So they have to dwell into the concept so that they are able to understand it in a better way. Now, the other aspect that the child has to know is they should be familiar with their learning style. Some of them are able to learn by the visual. Some are auditory. Some are kinesthetic. Some have tried to re learn by reading and writing. So help them to identify their learning style. The other aspect of it is they need to stop getting distracted. They need to stop getting distracted because it will not help them in achieving the goals. So the important aspect that we need to generate or help them is feed your focus and starve your distractions. Now of late you have all these gadgets, ask them to use it judiciously wherever it is necessary. That is which will help them to achieve the goals. Of course, they need to repeat what, you, what they have learned. So learning and revision will help them in a long way. They need to have a good uh, sleep because proper adequate sleep turns short-term memory to long-term retaining memory. So they need to have the adequate uh, dose of the sleep during their study time. And then this is one of the important aspects that we need to inculcate amongst the students, the Pomodoro technique. Okay, so they need to have this particular technique which will help them 
to relax. So this particular technique is used to balance, focus, and remain mentally fresh. So this is one important technique which we need to develop amongst the students. Now, the other aspect is they, they need to have some kind of meditation and exercise so that it controls anxiety, promotes emotional health, enhances self-awareness, and lengthens attention span. Now, you know, the children, they have a very short attention span. I think this can be improved by having this meditation and exercise. And they need to always start with the um, breaking the hard nut, that is taking the difficult concept first so that it can help them to boost their or develop the confidence. When once they feel that they are able to solve the, the uh, subject, which they find it very difficult, they are able to uh, improve their confidence level. Of course, they can have this particular uh, uh, shift between subject categories. I think there are different uh, subjects. Some are memory-based, like for example, economics, biology, history, geography, etc. Whereas there are some which are problem-solving subjects like chemistry, maths, physics, computer science, accountancy, and some are interpretation-based subjects like English and languages. So we need to uh, you know, juggle with these subjects so that uh, we can shift from one uh, type, one category to another so that again, it will uh, help to increase the confidence level. And the other important aspect is people who are taking up this CBSE board exam, they need to be very thorough with the, the uh, NCRT text and other uh, um, supplementary texts that have been available by the, uh, which have been introduced by the NCRT. Of course, he, we need to follow the 30-70 rule, wherein 30% reading and reciting 70%, which will help you to remember the concept and periodical test. So uh, you need not wait for the teacher to uh, give a regular test. You can also have, the students can also have the test administered to himself so that he'll be able to know where exactly he stands. And this is something which we need to uh, encourage the children, complaining they are not good at math. So that should not be the, uh, the thought that the child has. He should take some initiative to come out of it either by taking the support of the teacher or to get into some kind of uh, a additional support. So you, it's observed that the thinking muscle for leaving a comfort zone is very flexible. So we can make use of this particular concept. The more you use it, the more skill it becomes. And it, it becomes very easy for the teacher to tackle such type of condition. So you, we need to help this child to come out of the comfort zone of course, when he comes out, he'll have some kind of a fear of the, with the guidance and support of the parent and the uh, uh, teacher. I think uh, they are able to uh, dwell into new areas, the learning zone. And then when once he is confident, he is able to improve in a particular area. So that is what we need to increase the students. And now coming to the last aspect. So we find we are able to observe the students' expressions, isn't it? By observing the students' expressions, we are able to find out what exactly has gone through in their mind. Of course, when they are thirsty, so this may be the thirsty or hung hungry, they, this might be the expression. If they have not understood, if they are sad, it's the pain that they undergo. And if they are tired because they are not able to understand, that's the expression. Fear, if they have a fear of a particular subject, then if they have not achieved well, that's a uh, sad expression. And if they get annoyed of not getting the goal or reaching the goal, this is the expression. And finally, if they achieve something great, it always leads to laughter. So we need to rule out these three, I mean, these, that is thirst, hunger, pain, tired, fear, sad, angry. Let us try to instill these two aspects into children. So this is what I just wanted to share with you. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Mrs. Uh, Snehlita Vijay Kumar. It's a wonderful presentation. You have given a lot of insights on um, 
uh, how to look into not only the academics but also the comfort and um, how the students can plan and uh, and prepare uh, i think uh, the saying goes that uh, if you fail to plan you plan to fail yes yes and, uh, benjamin franklin says that touched upon a lot of aspects on planning and i'm sure when students uh, and the teachers parents all understand the purpose and preparation i'm sure it will lead to success yeah. it was very interesting session we have a few more speakers but definitely we will take up some of your points when we have a deliberation as a on a panel thank, thank you, you so much thank you sir thank you uh i think you touched upon different faces different emotions different uh, challenges of the students and uh, especially in terms of uh, <clears throat> how they could be comforted and i think i invite dr padma padmakshi lokesh to address on how comfortable the students can become after this 21 months of uh, pandemic where they had a lot of experience lot uh, experience lot of uh, uh, loss of learning and uh, loss of social contact and all that so i invite mrs padmakshi dr padmakshi lokesh to join us and take the floor thank you thank you so much for the wonderful opportunity sir a very good evening to all of you uh, td educational and charitable trust dr g tangadurai panir ramalingam sir dr upasna ma'am and snehalata ma'am namaste you all are doing wonderful job commendable job giving wonderful information uh, we can actually see the responses from the parents they really really impressed that is hats off to your uh, hard work and then uh good evening to all the parents out there and good evening to the wonderful children sitting there you are the center of attraction of today's topic i'm sure most of most of you out there might be parents of students of 10th standard that are of 12th standard so you all are just waiting to know what could be that trick which can come your way and you will tell your child or even the children are just waiting what is that that instantaneous trick which is going to, <laughs> which is going to come to me and i am going to do miracles in my examination i am just going to give you three to four uh, uh, information and this if you follow it is you are going to get miraculous responses in your examination yes uh, i kindly request all of you to please switch on your cameras but mute your uh, audio please switch on your cameras and mute your audio and i request you to constantly keep responding to my questions so i i at least know what's happening you see i am a clinical psychologist and every day day in and day out uh, we see patients and i don't even believe whatever they say so i believe what i see if i see the cameras are switched on then i know okay there are people listening to me thank you all for your uh, support swapna ma'am hello yes so the first thing you all want to know to you want your child to get very good areas for examination responses you need to stimulate their brain this way if you allow them to sit back and relax they'll all be sitting back and relaxing so the first thing is you need to tell them wake them up because two years almost two years of their life they have just switched off their cameras and uh, played and i don't know even uh, dived jumped in front of it the students have actually told me oh in my class the teacher will be talking i will switch off the camera and play with my younger sister elder brother and all those things so so the first thing we need to do is accept the reality because they've all stayed at home almost two two years it's not one or two days two years they have sat at the comfort zone of their houses switch off their cameras the teacher don't even know what's happening and even they don't even know what's happening and finally they just sit back and relax and then say okay teacher did not teach finally i didn't understand anything these are the verdicts they are just passing uh, no this was not at all fine the, the the internet was not fine so ultimately these are all reasons they're giving us just write down the reasons jot down the reasons and smile back and say listen these are all the things even i knew way back during my times it is just that i did not know corona but still 
time in and time out it is just not these two years every student of every generations gave the same answer teacher did not teach nobody accepted the reality saying i did not study i did not do anything so probably let us shake them and say you know for some time and say listen stop giving me all these things face the reality so ma- making your children facing the reality is the first thing first important thing tell them i mean the children also must be there next to you just get them just call all your children tell them sit sit in front of the camera now examination the biggest examination of life is life life has biggest uh, life itself is an examination and then what you are facing 10th standard and 12th standard is no big deal because i'm sure all the children must be praying to god let the third wave come fourth wave come fifth wave also come so that they will exams will be getting postponed or i shall pass even without writing the examination as parents you're not going to say tatastu for this kind of desires you are going to tell them see already twice you have twice you have jumped the examinations this time you might as well face it because please tell them the reality i'll tell you what it is people who are employing students you know the first thing they're telling is oh did you pass in the corona times then don't come for work because they don't know anything they don't even know what examination is all about so let us tell them whatever be the situation you have to write the examination because by writing the examination you're you're disciplining your brain for some kind of activity that is very very important so what happens is uh the, my daughter herself she's in 9th standard she's telling mama hope this time third wave is there and they will uh, cancel the examination i'll pass just like that so i tell her why why even go to school just be at home and then who is your best employer that's going to be me and then i'll employ you inside the house you can probably sweep the house swap the house clean the house wash uh, do the washing you can never become a doctor even today a medical college principal as asking me Uh, doc the government is going to send you know uh, do a rules that we will pass all the mbbs students second first year and second year without any examinations because they they were in corona just imagine okay first year puc 10th standard and all is okay doctors are going to just pass and come just like that as such itself first of all people like you don't even have good opinion about doctors like us and then i have a student who asked me there is an anesthesia when do i give it do i give it before the procedure or do i give it after the procedure this is the current situation and they want to wholesale pass everybody so i was telling my friend very good let them do it because till till we die we can practice because in any case these children will never have brains so we'll definitely make money so this is what i want to tell all of you as parents and even all the children sitting out there this is no big deal it is just an examination that has to be the attitude So just develop that to all the parents sitting out there don't tell your children oh my god examination oh my god two years you did not write at all please don't panic because of your panic you are going to push your anxiety to your child and first of all they don't even know what is examination imagine there are children who have just passed and gone in front and they don't even know what's an examination and when you tell oh my god examination they will believe what you are telling oh oh examination means something which has to be scared about please don't do that the first thing you need to do is it is an examination which you have to face that's very important because by facing examination they a lot of discipline will be inculcated in, into their lives every child is different one child is going to get 90% one child is going to get 50% one child is going to get 35% but whatever it is let them face the whole process that's very important there are parents who say hey i am also praying with you hope the corona third wave fourth wave sixth wave even 100th wave also everybody wants to you know pass and run away no tell your child let's face the ground reality together that's very very important the first thing is that as parents what we you have to do is <laughs> telling your child facing the reality as parents as well as teachers too as well as management too i'm sure the management and teachers are doing a wonderful commendable job the same thing the state the parents also have to do so that's the first and foremost thing face the reality see that is when the attitude of losing and winning will be coming and the pay, the child will take the lose the loss and the win uh, the winning attitude together if you don't allow them to do that they don't even know what is a loss they don't even know what is losing they don't even know what is winning 
so that is the reason when so many children don't know what is losing what is winning and all that stuff when suddenly they see their results the first thing they'll think is oh my god my life is over no and first of all they're not they are not playing they're not doing anything and they're sitting at home so they don't even know how to accept things in reality so this is what is very very important as parents if you want to give your child a beautiful future is that the first thing and foremost making them face the reality and then how to get good marks what is good marks you only know for somebody 50 marks also is good for somebody 90 also is very good so you decide and tell your child whatever marks you get i am going to be standing with you that is very very important that is very important see the current generation uh, there are parents who say oh my god if you don't take 90% that's it my question to those parents is what is the meaning of that's it are you telling your child there is no life ahead are you giving them negative information no so please tell them whatever it is go face the examination whatever marks you take is your marks and i am i ready to accept it and then they have higher desires they want to become a doctor tell them you don't become a doctor by sitting on a chair you are going to become a doctor you are going to become an engineer you are going to become an ias by working hard so hard work is something which you all need to start doing it and when do they start it there are children who will say hey, should i start studying for examination 10 days prior the examination i said don't even do that there's no point in doing so when is the start today is the start if they have not yet started even today also is never late but actually they should have started on the day of their <coughs> class started if it if they're still not done then today is the day start it today that's very important if they ask you any time mama papa when do i start tell them right away because you don't postpone your earnings you don't postpone your cooking if they ask food you give them today itself you give them now itself tell them when you ask something i give it to you so when we, you want to do something you do it right away so then very important thing what we are actually seeing is anxiety anxiety is something which is sat in every brain every small child's brain saying oh my god what will happen to me after my results what if i don't get a seat what if i fail what if i don't write my examination what if i fail in the examination what if i fall in the examination what if my brain doesn't work in the examination and all those things these are all questions is not which came during corona these are the question even came much before uh, corona and even before humanity came into existence so anxiety is something which is there in every human brain so it's up to us to shake our brain and get out of those anxieties anxieties very very clearly so tell your child whatever it is face the examination first and foremost thing second don't be scared there are so many children who fall during the examination there are children who fall before the examination children uh, need to prepare very well exactly very well said sir children need to prepare so very well so that they'll not fall during examinations there are so many people who tell us or oh, during examination you psychiatrists and psychologists make huge money uh, yeah we do it because with somebody's anxiety we are working on it so so if your child is facing a lot of anxiety let me give you the symptoms don't overlook at it please work on it if your child tells you i'm feeling very scared i'm feeling very scared i'm not able to remember anything i feel like crying i feel like you know anxious i there is dry mouth there is wet hands and all that stuff i'm not able to speak my head is spinning my eyes is spinning i i'm not able to remember i'm not able to recollect i'm not at all relaxed i'm not at all comfortable these are all signs of anxiety anxiety means fear of something which is not known they will think i will fail you ask him what is the meaning of failing they don't even know because somebody has told them oh you will fail mm. failing is not the end of life failing is the beginning of lot of new things that has to be told to the children very clearly so i have told so many symptoms if your child has any such symptoms please take them to a doctor are my is my child mad to take them to a doctor no please let me tell you if you have a pain in the stomach if you have a pain in the shoulder if you have pain in the head you will take the child to the doctor uh, this doctor, is also the same way agmakshi uh, could you please uh, wind up because we'll again come back we'll yeah, come just give me a minute sir i'm almost done yeah yeah sure 
yeah so you your child has any such uh, uh, problems please take them to a doctor and you find anxiety in your child please sit and clear it ask them to relax the first and foremost thing is you have to ask them to relax and memory is related to hippocampus amygdala and cerebellum this is all f- functions only when the child is relaxed so the first and foremost thing the only tip i want to give all of you to tell your children do whatever you want but in a relaxed state of mind so relax repeat and relax that is what is very important read very well relax and revise it that is what is going to make them completely successful so your brain is going to work wonderful if there is no anxiety so when there is no anxiety even the parent and the child will be able to perform very very well if you are not able to deal with your anxiety take them to a doctor that's all i would like to say thank you all for your patient listening and thank you have anything to ask you can personally ping me thank you for the wonderful opportunity thank sir you. thank you i'm done yeah. just remain for a while uh, i'm here all, i should I'm thank here. you and uh, we could realize the power of a psychologist uh, at this time of uh, recovery i think um, i did talk about the recovery plan i think a psychologist and psychology uh, plays a very important role in bringing about the recovery in this context i also uh, feel that the teachers are to be oriented on these aspects because in in the training part the teacher is also a counselor so they would have to take a role of a counselor more than uh, anything else at this point of time during the recovery plan that is fine and then you had a discuss about how the children have to face the reality that's a great interesting thing uh, that is something we will discuss a little later and uh, also the the stigma of uh, the pandemic you know of uh, not getting an employment because you had happened to be in the pandemic times well that stigma can also come out when if they are come out during the recovery plan to excel in whatever they do so thank you uh, dr dr lokesh for a wonderful presentation we wish we could keep on listening to you but you know we will uh, break up and come back to you so sorry for the intervention but we will come back to you no sir we, i would like to listen to the others too please yeah, yeah we will come back for a discussion uh having heard a, a psychologist and um, we also have heard about how the addictive effect of uh, of the prolonged online teaching uh, the devices uh, such as the smartphone induce children into a very seductive bond and may not be easy to shake off um, dr padmakshi said they need to shake off it is not that easy to shake off but then through counseling and uh, uh, guidance i think this is possible where they need to shift from the devices as an addictive to use devices to enlighten them how the same smartphones can be also good in restoring the child's innate desire to relate to the world uh, and i think in that context uh, the technologist the technological platform would play a very major step not only the psychologist the technologist also will play a very major steps towards educational recovery and in what way can they do is something that we need to hear from mr panir ramalingam who is the cfo of fast stage ai and uh, i invite mr panir ramalingam to take the floor and enlighten us how technology can help during this recovery plan and how to reinforce learning and make uh, thing learn make learning a joy i think uh, technology can also play this the technology makes the children joyful with all games and uh, uh, minecraft and all kinds of things i think how can they mine educational aspects educational Uh, prospectives i invite mr panir ramalingam to share his thoughts 
Thank you, Dr. Tangadrai. Thank you for all the audience here. Heartfelt thank you to everyone for giving me an opportunity to come and talk to you all about uh, what, uh, uh, where the technology is headed and uh, what we are doing in this space. Um, I'll broadly divide my um, introduction, uh, one as a macro trend as what we see and one as a micro trend as in what we are doing in this space and specifically what it could contribute to the term two uh, students and how they approach the term two. So with the, no further delay, let me dive into um, in my part of the presentation. Hopefully everybody is able to uh, see my presentation. Um, as Dr. Tangadra uh, introduced, um, I run an organization named uh, fastage.ai. Uh, we are based in the United States and we also uh, have offices uh, in uh, India, uh, Bangalore uh, and, and Chennai. Um, and uh, what we do is we bring uh, educational platforms uh, which are powered by newer technologies like artificial intelligence and so on and so forth uh, to schools and potentially uh, to students as to as a way to improve uh, learning in this post pandemic world. So let me first start off on the macro trend and let me show you a quick video of what people are saying, uh, especially around uh, technology's potential for transforming education. Listen, see, it, take a look at this video. Uh, sir, I'd just like to add, if there is an audio to this video, we are not able to hear that. So what, is, what does this video tell us? Economist Magazine has done a deep uh, research about what technology is doing for, to transform education, some of the lessons learned, uh, and, and this is a combination of what we are finding and what Economist Magazine has uh, identified as well. Teachers in schools have started innovating around the technology. They leveraged the, you know, these conferencing platforms that initially built for uh, video conferencing for education. Now they support remote learning and one-on-one -on -one type learning platforms, online assessment, which I think you already know what that is. And a new paradigm of teaching has emerged. Uh, teach students through stories and gaming. Uh, I have put together a, a snippet from a, a, a company called the synthesis.is. It is a company that was supported by Elon Musk. I'm, I'm sure most of you know who Elon Musk is. And he uh, tried to create a, an educational uh, mechanism uh, where students are uh, challenged to innovate as opposed to purely learn, right? So here is a, a gaming technology-based uh, learning paradigm. And, and there are other schools that I've seen in the United States, even in India as well, is to take open air as a, a way of conducting classes. So teachers in school, innovate around the technology. Now they started offering blended learning and personalized learning. I'll get into more of this, what blended learning and personal learnings are in a second. I don't have to tell you about the challenges you all face. Um, you know, students phase out um, in Zoom sessions, emotional setbacks. We heard from other speakers on the call, especially around term one. But what I have seen, what I've heard is questions were out of the syllabus, it's very complex, it's too difficult. The bottom line is students feel this uh, degree of uh, um, uh, anxiety, stress, fear, what happened in term one is going to come to term two, what are we going to do? That's why we see such a you know, great number of audience in this speech uh, or in this discussion today. And teachers, uh, you know, they have their own challenge. They themselves have to learn new technologies. They have uh, difficulty uh, learning 
uh, are understanding how well students are learning in a classroom given a remote or a digital environment. So such uh, set of challenges have put enormous burden on schools and teachers alike. I wanna show you one more video, and this is about how the new technologies are emerging, where the education is headed. And this is again, a point to the macro level. Please take a quick watch. Uh, Mr. Paneer, we are not getting the audio of uh, somewhere, the audio part. So the message from that video is uh, the learners, the students, they all learn at a different pace, right? Learning goes personal, learning goes adaptive, learning happens on any, on any device, at any time, uh, uh, at any place. So the education never stops. You know, I've been through my education system. I continue to learn every single day. We all do. So how does, how does all these technologies enable our students to help uh, do better? What we think is a methodology, as Bill Gates said, and somebody pointed out at the beginning of the, of the talk, is technology uh, is not everything, right? It's just an enabler, right? It's the teachers who do uh, the, the brilliant um, uh, task of uh, bringing students or the best out of the students. What our platform does is brings teachers and students together, gives them a methodology, what we call is a reinforcement methodology. Using this methodology, the students are able to learn even outside of their classrooms and continue to learn what they have learned using our methodology. We bring teachers, we bring lessons learned, we bring tests, and we use this uh, a wide range of content to reinforce what they have learned in school, uh, even at home, at their own pace, in their own setting, at, uh, at, in their own choice of device. And I'll get more into it, how the whole thing works. But what uh, the, the, the main message here is that when students come out of the school, um, there is got to be a degree of reinforcement and, and, and you, heard such a message echoed in other presentations, presentations as well. And the reinforcement in the form of uh, another teacher led, uh, uh, you know, video content plus tests plus doubt clarification sessions will phenomenally enhance a student's ability to be confident, address the challenges of fear and take on the exam boldly and, and, and get much better performance uh, for themselves and for their parents and their teachers. Getting more into the methodology. What is this, our methodology? What is it that we do differently? We enable, I know now that the pandemic is almost, you know, now we're talking about the wave two, wave three, um, the, the first wave is over, students are going back to school, but do we abandon this blended learning? No, the teachers take advantage of the digital content that is available. They get to prepare ahead of time, learn 
uh, their own uh, their own pace, what new technologies, how to deliver their content to their students, create this blended learning. And they could, uh, deliver this to students during a reinforcement session. And the students listen to these lectures, take a quick test, and then have doubt clarification sessions. And those test results are then fed into a data analysis of what we do, which allows us to determine what is the pace of an individual student of learning. If individual students have different paces of learning, how can we collect the data, present it to a teacher, where the teacher can adapt their delivery of content to the, the particular student? So uh, as I mentioned earlier, this sort of uh, broadcast model where you students going to a school, a teacher delivers a stand-up lecture, benefits students significantly, but a reinforcement learning where individual students uh, learning pace is determined and content is delivered to suit their learning pace is much more effective reinforcing what they have learned in school. Thus, we believe our methodology supports what uh, students and, and, and teachers achieve in school and help them learn better even at home. So that's our methodology. And in terms of how do we help teachers? Now, in, in, in a traditional way, when I was in school in rural Tamil Nadu, uh, teachers came to a class and they taught what they, uh, what they taught them to be taught. Now today, um, when teachers go back, they feel maybe I should have described this concept better. Maybe I should have done uh, a better explanation of this portion of the chapter, right? So what our platform allows us to do, allows teachers to create content, question papers, quizzes, and help them create this content and re rehearse what they want to teach in the class, right? It gives them a platform for them to practice what they should deliver in the class. And such a recordings can be available on the platform for the students to go back and watch later too. So teachers not only take advantage of uh, the newer technology and they are now delivering better content, and the students are taking advantage of the technologies, which is delivered over a digital platform, and not just when the uh, content is delivered, even when they are at home, whether it is a mobile phone, whether it is a laptop, they can connect to the, the same portal and what was taught in the class, they're able to revise it. They're able to go back and forth, fast forward, rewind the same concept over and over. Right. So we didn't have such capabilities when we were growing up in school. We had to absorb everything in our minds and we had to go back and, and try to deliver that in the class. But today, technology enables such an ability to to um, rewind and go back and learn what what uh, what was taught in school. And also the teachers, uh, you know, the ability for them to create content and deliver uh, better lectures. Uh, to students in school. In summary, what's our strategy? We bring to a bring a platform where teachers create content, and the content gets delivered to students in their own setting, and students learn uh, what they want to learn at their own pace, and uh, their data, whatever the test results are analyzed, and their learning speed is determined and provided to teachers who can then personalize, uh, who can then deliver personalized and differentiated content to students so that they all absorb better. That's our strategy. That's what we are, uh, you know, are bringing on our platform. What does it mean for term two? So here is, here is what we are doing for term two. We are bringing experience to teachers uh, onto our platform. We are bringing specific chapters mapped to lectures. And our thinking here is uh, we focus that interactive learning session for 35 to 40 minutes or, or even up to 15 minutes. At the end of that uh, session, we give the students an opportunity, an instant quiz, right? The technology platform enables it. No longer teachers have to go take, you know, correct paperwork. This test the student take right after that class gives them an instant result to the students and the teachers and possibly to parents, right? So now the results are known and you get an immediate feedback as to how each and every child uh, performed in that test, and the results are taken back into our analysis, and then we are further fine-tuning what the content is and how 
to personalize that content and deliver it to individual students. This sort of a loop continues on on a chapter by chapter and subject by su subject, thus delivering performance over a period of time. So this, again, this is a methodology that what we came up with, with by working with uh, an educational company in Bangalore, and this is proven, this works. And, and we don't say that this is the only method. Uh, we, what we do, as, we, as I mentioned earlier, we bring a platform, we give the tools, individual schools, teachers, arm them with the tools so they can create a methodology, an approach that is suitable for their own students so that they can deliver what uh, the right way of delivering content to those students. So it is not about this is the only way to do it. This is one way of doing it. And you can innovate different methodologies on our platform. We give you the tools. We help you craft the tools into a methodology and you deliver the stellar success to students. Eventually, we are, this, this is all about helping students continue to learn outside of their classroom. Reinforcement results in better performance. We, here is a, we did this for term one. We took a group of students and, and we created what we call as a rapid revision program. As you all know, for term one, we got a limited amount of time and we worked with our educational partner to, and created a rapid revision program. And this program um, was a series of uh, rapid revisions on chapters. And here is a testimonial from one of the parents and what they felt they got a very good learning experience and in the bottom line, that child was confident, right, in tackling uh, the exam, right? The, as as uh, others pointed out, the lack of time, the pressure students are in, the anxiety of exam, the fear of poor performance puts an enormous psychological burden on the students, right? And, and you know, as, as you all know, fear, we all know this, if, uh, and I've learned this in life, fear is a disease and it'll consume you. And the only way to handle fear is to face it boldly. And how do we su suggest that you face this is to constantly uh, go through a reinforcement, take the test, face the test every single day, and then prepare yourself boldly. So when the exam day arrives, and you go and you deliver and you are confident that you're going to perform well. And uh, with that, um, I'll conclude my presentation. Uh, thank you all for listening to me. And you can contact us if you want to find out more about what we do and how we have done and how we can help you on these coordinates. Thank you again. Thank you, thank Dr. Dhanadrai. At this point, I'll stop sharing any. Uh, I'll leave it to you. Thank you, Mr. Pandey Ramalinga. Please stay with us. Uh, uh, we, now we have seen the marvel of uh, technology in reinforcing learning. He has also brought in the concept of differentiated learning, which is a very challenge, especially when you have 30, 35 students in a class to address the individual problems. So I think technology has the power of uh, attending to the in personalized learning and differentiated learning. And uh, you also talked about uh, lowering the anxiety level. Yes, the anxiety of a student always when he faces uncertainty. And uh, when he faces, there is a lack of conceptual knowledge. And uh, the day he gets enlightened on those concepts, there is a kind of a high self-esteem that, that builds up in him. Uh, since... Uh, See, this is uh, my way of experience, I say. Uh, my grandson can handle a mobile much better than what I can do, especially with these iPhone techniques. He can play with it very so easily. They are so aligned with technology that for them to adapt a technology would not be a stress, but a, a plaything. And if learning could be fun and joy in this handsets or in on the laptop, I think that would go a long way in reinforcing learning during this recovery period. Because we are going through a recovery period, the teachers have come back to the class, they will do their best in terms of strategy 
and uh, trying to bring out the best in the students. And uh, your recommendation that after school hours, the reinforcement exercise through a digital experience quite obviously would not be a stress like the homework. The homework used to be a stress. Oh, today the teacher has given me a homework to write so many pages. But you ask him to work on a digital content, he is quite happy with that. So maybe, according to Mr. Paneer uh, Ramalingam, I think the digital platform will also help us during this recovery period. Now I request uh, Mrs. Kao to put us on a panel, all of us, for a discussion on this topic, how to prepare the students for CBSC grade 10 and 12. We would briefly recollect some of the points shared by, can we have all of them on the panel, please? Uh, Yes, thank you. Yes, all of us are there. So it's 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 a it's a very collaborative effort on all our part on our part to bring in uh, the insights of how we can prepare the students for grade ten and twelve. Yes, um, Doctor. Upendra, uh, 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 Dr. Upasana, sorry, Up Dr. Upasana, Yadav had rightly told about mentoring. That was a very important aspect which I felt that matches with the thoughts of uh, Dr. Padmakshi. Uh, in fact, uh, this mentoring is a very influence, uh, influential thing. Uh, we did that in, uh, in our schools, you know. We also used to have a home visits. See, especially uh, I have gone to some of their houses and uh, uh, they are so excited that the principal has come to the home. And uh, uh, there were houses where they offered me biryani also, which of course, I mean, that was, a, that was a hospitality you get when principal goes to the home. And when we talk to the parents, you know, that bridges the gap. And I think that is one way of reconciliation. And... Uh, Dr. Padma, Padma Upasana has always has brought down this point very clearly. And she talked about gifted students also that because they are very person who can trigger your thoughts. Even if you have not planned certain things, they will make you plan that part of this strategy. And um, uh, uh, of course, uh, uh, Mrs. Uh, uh, Snehlata, Vijay Kumar has given a lot of strategy and uh, insight, but she also touched upon meditation. She touched about exercise. I think all these are becoming an integral part. And how are we to go to bring in this into is something that we need to discuss. How are we going to, we have discussed so many things. We have discussed technology. We have discussed narrowing down, down, narrowing down the learning loss. We have discussed about how to make children's comfort and successful. And, uh, uh, and above all, uh, uh, we have also discussed about how these children should shed off that addiction of uh, the devices. So can, uh, can anyone come forward to see how all this can be put into a, a nutshell for us as a capsule uh, to see how we could take it home and deliver in our schools. And all the participants who are waiting to see, uh, because they have heard so many things, how could we blend? I mean, technology, how, how, what is your opinion about technology coming in? And uh, what is your opinion about uh, the mentoring aspect? And let us discuss that. Can we somebody initiate that discussion? Uh, sir, I would like to go for it. Ma'am uh, spoke about sleep. I reinforce sleep on a very regular uh, basis to everybody. What happens is, uh, Paneer sir spoke about technology. And I am somebody who who's always for technology because the current generation loves technology. 
you it's like you give them if the parent or you as a teacher i tell it to them they will not listen if it comes to some technological sources it's like uh, teertham for them they will definitely take it so it is like oh it was it was told in that um, that video or this one or some app told me this and all so that is the effect of technology in the children yes please utilize the maximum technological support you can but don't discount the quality of sleep which is very very important i want to tell this to all the children which is very important you ask them to sleep they'll switch off the lights they will put their blankets on their face and keep the phone inside and i don't know what they'll watch see that is not actual that is not technology technology is something which is going to help you in your development but what happens is they they don't sleep on time when an individual not only children any individual who does not sleep on time their uh, memory pro- pro- their memory and concentration yeah, has a problem uh, just to intervene uh, what is your opinion since uh, you are talking about sleep you are talking about various uh, ways of which they need to shake off uh, their addictiveness uh, what is your opinion in in, uh, in in during this recovery plan how can we prepare the teachers because we can't reach uh, all of us uh, as a counselor according to the cbsc we have maybe maximum two or two counselors in a school it cannot be possible for this two persons to handle such a issue especially post pandemic how do you think we can connect it with the teachers so that we have the head of the institution and the senior educator we could take this uh, and see how the teachers could play a very important role as a teacher counselor sir can i yeah uh, now i feel that teachers have to um, have face or develop different strategies to gain their attention the attention of the students one is uh, leverage interest you need to leverage interest wherein uh, attention is enhanced when interest is uh, heightened so that should be one of the aspect and that can happen when the teacher is trying to uh, implement uh, varied instructional strategies depending upon the uh, or uh, depending upon the type of students that she has so another aspect that we need to focus on is the personalized uh, learning that is one important aspect that we as teachers have to develop because it creates individual learning pathways so that is one important aspect and uh, we have to um, plan in such a way that you need to involve the students while while you plan for a particular class so that the students have that comfort zone and they are they are having that confidence to come out of the comfort zone also so when once you instill confidence i think we can do some kind of research uh, with the students that's what i feel i would like to add to this uh i would like to request our teachers to sleep very well very important <laughs> that is extremely important and when the sleep is discounted the higher cognitive functions of the brain irrespective of the age doesn't function well so i essentially request all the students there please sleep 8 hours a day which is really an essential thing because what all you have studied the whole day what all activity which is there it has to be processed very well and it from the short term memory it has to be stored in the long term memory this whole process hacks happens very well when you do sleeping and also by proper sleeping there is the whole body gets rejuvenated which is very very important the stress which we experience the anxiety which we experience every day by proper sleep patterns it is really good for the whole mechanism to put on the track uh, so that's you, very uh, doctor upasana uh, as a head of the institutions i think you are working on strategies with teachers and uh, you also said you are you also have a discussion with the students as well that's a very good thing you know we must hear the unheard the students have many unheard voices they have a lot of things they never speak out sure, and if you could hear the unheard you find a lot of solution to a problem and you can craft your strategy keeping them also in mind see and um, in this process Uh, i think one of the uh, the committee has recommended that we should have a 
a, a, a curriculum which should bridge these gaps that has been created by the pandemic. Okay. Yeah. Uh, how do you think as an institutional head and keeping in mind the CBSE syllabus and CBSE chapters that are prescribed, you could have a recovery plan before you take on, on a full-fledged on the recovery on the CBSE syllabus. How would, you, how would you design a bridge course and what would be the kind of a bridge course and what would you use other than teachers? Do you think the technology can also play a part in it in your bridge course? as uh, Mr. Paneer Ramalingam has very vividly has brought out so many aspects of how technology can bring about the reinforcement. Do you think all this can be done by the teachers alone during that six hours or, about, or no, I think is a reduced time. Yes. So we have a reduced time, uh, reduced syllabus, <laughs> reduced uh, span of time to prepare them for the examination. We are working, working, uh, walking on a, what I would say a tightrope walking, yeah. and uh, in that context, how technology, how your teachers can design a curriculum. Uh, sir, uh, very rightly uh, put across. I completely agree with what uh, you know you just shared with us. The main point here is, sir, uh, as you said, the syllabus has been brought in. They are reducing the syllabus, but if you keep the class twelve students in mind, sir all the competitive examinations have not reduced the syllabus. Their syllabus, their syllabus remains the same. Yeah. So we need to, what we are doing, sir, we are not actually reducing the syllabus. We are going on as what is there. Of course, it is not given in the examinations. We don't test the children, but we teach them. Yeah. And uh, secondly, sir, uh, just as uh, Snehlata ma'am was saying, to generate the interest in the students, we try, uh, you know, to divide, design our lesson plans in a manner where we are connecting every, con uh, you know, concept with the daily life. So they connect to it, uh, you know, uh, the children, they connect to it sooner, faster, and the impression on their mind is longer, sir. So the retention capacity is more when they connect it with the daily life examples with the children. And this we are doing across the board from classes one to 12. Another uh, thing which we have done uh, so far, we have taken the help of our special educator and our counselor. We have given several training sessions for our teachers uh, to identify uh, any issue with the child, you know, is abnormally behaving. They may not be able to help the child directly, but they can because they are interacting with the students every day. So if any child is not the usual self, we have trained the teachers to identify that child. And then we are able to, you know, address the child with the help of the counselor and, you know, address the issue. And uh, coming to the mentor, mentee, as uh, you were sharing, of course, definitely we do that as well. We visit the children's home and, uh, you know, uh, they are... Uh, and sometimes it is surprise visit also. We yeah. I <laughs> I don't tell them that I'm with this place. Sir, you'll have biryani there. Yes. Oh uh, yes. Sir. <laughs> so uh, that that helps a lot in the confidence. It's a big confidence boosting exercise amongst the parents, students, uh, and teachers. And I generally take the subject teacher or uh, you know the class teacher along, and especially the subject where the child is struggling, if at all. So uh, we try to build that, uh, you know, to bring up that, you know, the gap, whatever is in the, maybe the communication or understanding. So these are certain exercises which we do. I and, think, uh, uh, I think uh, predominantly that CBSE has uh, brought in the idea of a compulsory development program that is CPD. I think yes, in sir. that context, I think we, as I said, the teachers bring about 45% of the learning outcome. Absolutely. So I think we have to prepare the mindset of the teachers, not only in terms of the physical exertion, hard work that they do always. And uh, I think we need to orient them on various aspects of uh, uh, psychology and uh, various aspects of strategies which they can also design. And we could also hear their voices as well. True, sir. I mean, their voices as well. Uh, this would be a very healing touch on them who who do not get much opportunity to, or do not have a flexible uh, operation system. Uh, so, uh, so that is there. And here now I just, because, you know, we are at 7.57 uh, 
and uh, we would now request uh, Dr. Um, Mr. Paneer um, Ramalingam. You have heard all of us, and I think you were the last speaker. And quite obviously, uh, you have, uh, you would have rethought on certain aspects on how to use technology because uh, our head of the institution, our senior educator, our psychologist have uh, brought out certain points which you might have noted down and you are good in noting down points. So <laughs> let us see how you can bring in uh, to address this issue. Of course, uh, your, um, your scheme of uh, after school reinforcement, teacher led uh, uh, interaction and uh, immediate uh, assessment after class this would be like, you know, almost preparing them and nurturing them. I think in the recovery plan, a teacher will have to nurture like a nurse. After ailment, just like a nurse uh, addresses the problem, a teacher will have to nurse. And uh, in this context, what is your uh, say? Thank you, Dr. Thangadurai. I think, uh, yes, uh, Dr. Lokesh said, um, you know, the new... Uh, way of teaching delivered uh, in the form of uh, uh, through technology definitely will get more traction. If you look at the, the, the what children are spending more of uh, their time, they're watching videos, they're doing chats with others, and these are the mechanism by which they communicate. They're very adept at this, right? Now, I'm, I'm gonna ask the teachers to consider this as a request. Instead of, uh, you know, the traditional model, you know, can you supplement the traditional model of teaching? Are you able to create a TikTok like micro capsule of videos of specific subjects? you know, one minute videos, right? At the end of one minute video, maybe you could ask a couple of questions, right? So if you are able to create these sort of videos and ask students to swipe chapter one, chapter two, chapter three, now they are able to go back and forth. Now the, 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 the lessons are delivered in a micro capsules and their mind is so thirsty to for information in the form of video, we are now delivering content or educational content in the form of videos, they absorb that. Doubt clarification in the other powerful area. If you all know, and WhatsApp has become like uh, bread and butter in our life. If, are you able to create that mentoring sessions by creating a focus group of what WhatsApp group and say, you guys get together on a WhatsApp group, discuss among yourselves what questions you have. And if you want any specific doubts to be clarified between the time of uh, 6 p.m. and 7 p.m., I'll be available. You can clarify, uh, you can ask me questions on WhatsApp, right? So I'm requesting teachers to take advantage of the video technologies, the chat mechanisms as a tool to better engage with students in, in the, uh, and deliver content in the way that they are really consuming. Right, trying to you know they they no longer uh, if they're no longer paying attention to the lecture type mode, look, look at other modalities to deliver this and keep that engagement going. And I see uh, you know the students uh, who have hesitation to raise the doubts in front of their peers. Now they can ask that in the privacy of their home on a WhatsApp one-on-one -on -one session, can much more you know, openly express their doubts, however, quote unquote, uh, silly it might sound to them, but they have that uh, sense of privacy that they can ask their questions. So take advantage of technology, uh, try to create content, uh, you know, and, and implement what you all have, I mean, what you all have, no technology can ever bring. But with what you have in terms of lesson, use the technology to better educate the students is what I see uh, that you can, you, can, uh, uh, you can do it going forward. Thank you, Mr. Paneer. I think uh, technology can also hear the unheard and also reflect the um, unlearned uh, and bring in uh, reinforcement of learning that was uh, the time now is uh, eight not two uh, we will have five minutes allotted to each to give a concluding remark on the entire deliberation of course it was a tight schedule but still uh, i think it was a very wonderful presentations and thought sharing and all of you have been wonderfully as a leader of uh, 
thought leaders as such because this was a forum for uh, sharing your thoughts and uh, uh, may I request uh, first Dr. Upasna Yadav to give a concluding remark uh, that uh, will consolidate uh, all that we have discussed and what she has uh, taken from others as well as uh, what she could give to these participants who are very, I mean, this time I had about 500 plus participants, but unfortunately all of them did not join. This I knew because over the years, over, this is my 31st webinar and I had in some webinars going up to 1000 plus, but ultimately it will be 300 who join. So, <laughs> so let us not worry about the participants, but even if 10 or 15 are there, we share our thoughts. So I invite uh, Dr. Upasana, please. Uh, so thank you, sir. My takeaway from the session and to after hearing uh, the other learned speakers uh, on the platform, sir. Uh, first of all, uh, like uh, Padmakshi Madam has said that, of course, you know, we need to take care of the students' well-being, mental and physical. We need to, and this has to be, you know, taken care of at both the ends from the school end as well as from the parents end. So we need to take everybody in the loop. So that is one thing. Secondly, sir, again, preparation as Sneha Lata Madam very well had she has brought out regarding all the subjects also. It has to be more focused approach yeah. regarding the studies. So uh, we need to, every subject teacher or a class teacher has to bring that the focused approach into the learning. And I'll again uh, reiterate that we should not forget the gifted learners and the slow learners of our class and uh, design a curriculum according to that, taking the help of the technology as, uh, you know, uh, Ramlingam sir was saying that, you know, we all have WhatsApp groups for subjects, for every subject, for every class. And, uh, you know, this gives an opportunity to the students to, you know, bring about, uh, bring up their uh, doubts. Uh, so we should continue with doing that. And another aspect which I would like to add here is the flip learn, which the technology would help us to. So flip learn technology should be, you know, brought into the curriculum, which we are not using so often or we were not using earlier. But I think it should be made a part of a regular teaching process. Uh, once uh, we go ahead, uh, you know, or we come out of this uh, COVID uh, pandemic and unprecedented times. So uh, these are the few takeaways uh, for me, sir, from this. Uh, uh, do you think, uh, Mr. Ramalingam, this uh, flip learning, flip learning basically is uh, the students that design the content, the students uh, uh, create a project on a collaboration. Uh, since uh, they have a WhatsApp group, they all get together. If a project is given, they will all get together and design a digital project uh, and then show it in the class where the teacher has not much. She may have given some guidelines on that, but uh, flipped learning. Uh, do you think your technological uh, company could also design such students' involvement? You talked about teachers' intervention. You talked about reinforcement. Can students' involvement can also come because uh, many of the teachers are not so good in designing content. A student can do. So uh, anyway, that you can think of it when your turn comes. So um, uh, my next uh, 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 request would be to Mrs. Nailata. You have. Yes, sir. Uh, I think uh, according to Dr. Uh, Upasana, uh, she was able to show the process of uh, what is responsibility in a stepwise, like starting with the plan execution and then uh, trying to evaluate where exactly have we gone wrong and what is the uh, change that we need to do. So that stepwise uh, flow of those ideas, I think it was clearly told. When once we uh, try to test the children and later we need to find out where exactly the child is finding it difficult, analyze it. And maybe the question way in which we have uh, framed may be very difficult for the student to understand, or uh, maybe the child is not able to understand the concept. So there are two ways in which we can uh, dissect that particular uh, aspect and find out whether it is the mistake from the teacher's side or from the understanding side of the student. So that is one aspect. I think uh, Dr. Padmakshi was able to highlight upon 
what is the need of the hour, especially from the psychological point of view, when all of us, whether the teachers, the parents, and the students, are were undergoing this phase of anxiety. Uh, so I think she has come out with the solution for all that. And uh, Dr. Paneer, I think uh, he has highlighted the role of technology, <clears throat> how it can be implemented, and uh, it, it can be used as a supplement, but not as a substitute. So that is what he tried to emphasize. So these are the takeaways that I have just understood. I think finally, I think we need to remember three Ds. That is, we need to be uh, dedicated. Then we need to be, and it should be a deliberate one, and it should be a directional one. So if you just follow these three Ds, I think uh, we will be able to reach whatever we have planned off. Thank you. Yes. yes. Thank you, Mrs. Vijay Kumar. Uh, Dr. Padmakshi, I think uh, uh, we had a lot of deliberation on comfort and fear and uh, learning and growth, all these uh, to be taken care in the school. And the teachers are the role player. They are the, the most important player in the school who are connected with the students. A uh, counselor can play a role in counseling the students, counseling the teacher. Uh, but uh, the important player on the stage is the teacher. And during this recovery plan, uh, what is the, the, the modified role of a teacher uh, that uh, you see as a psychologist? Modified role is the teacher becomes a counselor here, where they're actually going to say, yes, no mm -hmm. problem, you can do something. So from all the four of our speakers, what I understood, the four T's which are really important is the teacher, the technology, the, the theories and the therapies, which are very, very important for in the post-recovery uh, time. And as students, they just don't know. They're very young uh, children. They don't know what it is. So if you just try to tell them this is what it is and try to go in this direction, they will definitely adapt that and uh, adaptability is something which all of our children have in in huge uh, huge numbers so it's just that we need to guide them so guidance is what the teacher has to be giving in a very large scale all teachers are really wonderful i'm sure they'll be doing a great job and uh, i need to congratulate you sir it was a wonderful platform it was actually a huge learning for me too thank you thank you we all enjoyed it and your session was also very quite mesmerizing and I can see oh, many of our listeners nodding their head in agreement with many of the points because that is the healing touch that is required now. And uh, uh, thank you, uh, Dr. Padmakshi. Thank uh, you, sir. Inputs and uh, yes, uh, Mr. Paneer. Uh, uh, one thing that uh, is, a, is, a, is, a, is a challenge in terms of uh, technology is to... Uh, bring them back to the relate to relate to the world i mean uh, re, i think um, somebody talked about uh, the world of realities and uh, in addition to uh, academics and uh, reinforcement of learning uh, how could the, the technologically i think you have uh, talked about artificial intelligence uh, could also bring in some kind of a reality uh, uh, in other ways, how are you going to bring about restoring the child's uh, innate desire to learn and make learning a joy, which, which you have said most of them. Still, we would like to have a concluding remark based on other speakers' um, inputs. Right. Uh, let me start off with the, the you had, uh, Dr. Pasna had asked a question about flipped learning and you asked whether we could support okay. something like that. The technology platform has uh, no limitations as you know, only the teacher can create content. We are able to allow the students to create content, make that content available for sharing of other students. Uh, and you know, maybe one student can create a content for only a group of their own friends. So such a, a functionality can be supported. Uh, from, uh, you know, to summarizing, you know, I've learned a lot in this session. Uh, I've learned a lot of, prescriptive approaches as to what, uh, you know, from a psychological point of view, what to, from a teaching point of view, what students can uh, learn and do here. Um, uh, my uh, uh, biggest lesson is that um, students learn at a different pace. Um, and 
if you are not careful, uh, it's uh, almost like uh, teaching them swimming, right? You take them to a swimming pool. The two ways of teaching them, push the child into the deep end of the pool and then let them figure out how to swim. That would be dump them in the middle of the technology, in the middle of an ocean, you know, you learn to swim, otherwise you can't survive. Alternatively, the teacher led, the, like, like the, the panel speakers here, they hand hold the child to the shallow end of the pool, let him learn in, at his own pace, of swimming is what I think uh, you know needs to be done. What that's what I heard uh, individual teachers speak about, and uh, our platform enables such a learning methodology um, and to take advantage of that. Uh, not just our platform, any platform. Use technology as much as you can. Uh, I talked about uh, micro capsule. You know, I, I find it very. Uh, effective. I know a lot of people have learned, you know, quick tips about how to do certain things, uh, cooking recipes to how to change uh, you know, your phone settings, everything on TikTok. So it's a powerful medium of learning. Artificial intelligence. Uh, Dr. Tanadura, you know, the teachers, I believe, should be focusing on teaching, not focusing on repetitive tasks, correcting papers, uh, trying to avoid all the mechanical stuff. They do the mechanic, you know, put all the mechanical repeating things to a technology platform, uh, sit back and innovate how to educate kids, how to teach them. How does artificial intelligence help in this? Uh, it's, a, it's a platform. It allows us to collect data about individual students. It crunches the data, gives a specific student's performance uh, to a teacher saying, hey, this particular student, Raju from 10th grade B section, is poor in chemistry, uh, in organic chemistry, right? Now you're now able to create a very specialized uh, uh, you know, questions for Raju on organic chemistry. That's what artificial intelligence can do for you. Allow teachers to figure out who, who is strong in what area, who is soft or weak in what specific areas, help the teacher to craft the appropriate type of learning material for individual students. The more we get to personalized and differentiated learning, the better will be overall performance. More importantly, I, I, I'm grateful to, for all my teachers that the sense of uh, uh, the contentment a teacher gets, uh, the, the warmth they feel when a child achieves something is not, you cannot get from anything else, right? I mean, I think when you deliver a differentiated personalized learning, and when you see your students rise up in society, and you feel a, a degree of achievement, and the society doesn't, uh, you know, reward the teachers as much as they should. Uh, but uh, my heartfelt salute to each and every one of you for raising such a, such a quality students and so on and so forth in life. So thank you to all of you. Thank you. And uh, <clears throat> as we come to the close of the session, uh, the, at the outset, I should thank all the panelists for their time and the kind of uh, resources that they have shared with us. TD Educational and Charitable Trust, which is a basic objective is to support the teachers and as Dr. Upasana has right, mentor the teachers. And uh, this platform, we brought all of you together and uh, we have uh, had about 200 plus uh, quite a good number of principals were also there and teachers. I'm sure they will take away certain inputs and if they could implement and use it in the school or refresh their mind and review and how to strategize would be, a, uh, as uh, Mr. Paneer said, the contentment, it would be a fulfillment for us uh, to see how uh, our thoughts, our deliberations have reached the students through teachers and principals who were a very uh, active audience. But before we conclude, we would like to hear one or two voices of the participants. And if anyone is there, I would appreciate uh, if you could, yes, if anyone is there could raise the hand. Uh, the technology also enables you to raise your hand or even you unmute and chip in. That's okay, fine for us. Okay. Come on, this is a 
uh, I mean, you need not, uh, you can turn on your uh, camera or you need not, but at least. Uh, Excuse me, sir. Yeah. May yes. I? Yeah, please introduce yourself. No, thank you, sir. Uh, this is Sheetal Dewdi from Bhavan JVM Hingan Ghat. Okay. Hello. Yes. Am I audible, sir? Yeah. You're audible. You're audible. Yeah, this was the, yeah, yeah. This was really the sublime session, sir. We learned a lot. And especially your words infuse us with positivity. Thank you so much, sir. Okay. Thank you. Any any others would like to share that? I think the many. Sir, good are... evening, sir. Good yeah. evening, sir. Good evening. This is me, Muthu Kumar Swami yeah. from Velamal Vidyalaya, Chennai, sir. Mm -hmm. So really, uh, the panelists gave very good information to us, as well as doctor, the psychology doctor, psychologically how we should approach the child. Well, it was fantastic session, sir. For one and a half hour, two hours gone, but we never noticed that two and a half hours we are sitting in yeah. front of uh, electronic gadgets. Yeah, it was very, very useful, sir. I thank personally to all the panelists and as well as you, sir. Thank you. Thanks a lot, sir. May I, sir? May yes, I, sir? sir. Yeah, sure. Uh, sir, I'm Bhavaneshwari Lakshmanan, Vice Principal of Vidya Mandir High Secondary School, Salem. Uh, the uh, sublime session, as uh, the previous uh, uh, participant told, uh, Madam Psychologist, ma'am, she boldly said that it is the right time to wake up. The slumber is enough and we should have a bold hand over the children as a parent and as well as teacher and give a positive outlook, sir. So it was really commendable and uh, really give a good a uh, positive thought for us. Uh, thank you, sir. It's a wonderful session, sir. Thank so you. So nice of you. So nice. Yes. Welcome, sir. Yes. Yes. I'm Bharati from PSBB Millennium School, Coimbatore, sir. Okay. So, yeah, the session was really an amazing session because I used to attend so many webinars. Mm -hmm. It is entirely different. I did, and I admire a lot uh, about the panelists, uh, that is the information they provided. Really, it is a very good thing. So thank you. Thank you so much for arranging such a wonderful session. Thank you. Yes. Please, I uh, thank all the panelists for this. Yeah. Uh, good evening, everyone. This is Meera from Bulan Sher, Vidya Gyan School, Bulan Sher. I'm a BST teacher. And after this session, we are really looking forward to, you know, conquering term two with our students. Thank you so much, everyone. <laughs> Very good. <laughs> Thank you so much. It was a fantastic session. Thank you. Thank you. So can I speak? Yes, yes. Uh, it's open. It's yeah. Open. Uh, good evening to one and all gathered here. I'm Clara Fernandez from the King's School, Goa. So uh, uh, I would really take this opportunity to thank each one of you all the speakers, everything was so very well managed. And in the little span of time that each one got, how well they put things forward, that is really going to help each one of us teachers. And really, as each one of the uh, participants said, you know, it's really a totally unique uh, thing that we have experienced today, uh, other than the other things. And really, these points, especially how the psychologist spoke, you know, it's time. Whatever be it, tell the children face the reality. It's time. We have we are facing the reality, but it's time to help them, you know, be that wind beneath their wings. Thank you. And God bless each one of you. Thank you. Thank you. So may I, sir? Yes, yes. Yeah. Uh, good evening, everyone. I'm Uma Peshwa from Mysore National Public School. Uh, it was a great platform to hear all from the expertise here. And uh, my takeaway is mainly the mentoring part. And especially, Pani, sir, I really loved your TikTok one-minute video. I'm <laughs> really going to try this in for physics, especially, you know, physics is a hard nut to crack. So uh, mainly, wherever we find that is a tough subject for the students, I will try this one-minute video and come back to you with a feedback. Thank you very much, Tangadurai, sir, for this uh, wonderful session. Thank Thanks you. a lot for all the everyone. Thank you. Good evening, sir. Good evening, yes. Uh, sir, I am uh, Minnal Kodi from Salem, principal of Jiva Public School. Actually, thanks a lot for you to 
uh, gave this opportunity to us. And even when the session was going on, when Dr. Batmakshi uh, started addressing, I sent the link to my kids and some of my students joined in between. And uh, really, uh, we have learned a lot, sir. And uh, as uh, psychologists told, we have to come out of our anxiety because after seeing the performance of the kids in the term one, actually we are in anxiety. Mm -hmm. So now uh, this is, this session made us to how to come out and how to work our work in the remaining time with the children for the betterment. Really, a wholehearted thanks to the organizing and all the resource persons today for sharing a valuable thoughts, sir. Thank you, thank you very much. Thank you. We have also participants from Middle East, uh, Oman, three of them were there, and the UAE and uh, also Sarja. Is anyone would like to speak across the boundary through our technology? Okay, uh, this program is going live as you can see on the YouTube as well. And uh, it will be there for many of these participants to revisit and uh, listen to us again. And uh, I will also facilitate so that they could have a revisit and uh, make use of our deliberations this evening. Uh, before we conclude, uh, I think uh, Vijaya has been working very hard behind the scene. And uh, I would request her to propose the vote of thanks. And she is also the trustee of TD Educational and Charitable Trust. Is she there, Vijaya? Thank you, sir. Hmm. Am I audible, sir? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Can you come uh, on the screen? I am there. Okay. You are there on the screen. Okay. We can't see you. Yeah, yeah, now we can see. Good evening to all the eminent educators and the audience. On behalf of TD Educational and Charitable Trust, I, Vijaya Tangadurai, one of the trustees, thank each one of you for making this webinar a success in terms of learning. First and foremost, I would like to extend my heartfelt thanks to Mrs. Lata Mishra, our trustee, for providing us with this platform through which we could collaboratively learn by sharing the good practices. I would also like to thank Dr. G. Tangadurai, Managing Trustee, TDH, for wonderfully moderating this webinar and sharing the insights on today's topic. Furthermore, I would like to express my gratitude towards our esteemed panelists, Dr. Upasana Yadav, Mrs. Nehalata Vijayakumar, Dr. Batmakshi Lokesh and Mr. Pani Ramalingam for taking time out of, out of the busy schedules and helping our audience get a better clarity on the topic. Of course, this event would have not been complete without the help of the proficient backend team and the tech support of the TD Act. Thank you, team. Last but not the least, a big thanks to our wonderful audience who has been constantly supporting us. I sincerely hope you all log out with more knowledge and better clarity to help the students. Once again, thanks a lot everyone for joining us and wish you all a great Sunday. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Vijay. So uh, we come to the close of the program and uh, I want to thank all the panelists. Uh, for giving us the time and uh, the kind of uh, knowledge sharing that has happened. We will take an opportunity to see again when we can meet again for uh, different topics. Uh, we are continuing with these webinars on every fortnight on a Saturday. And uh, we are trying to reach out. So far, we have reached out around 3,500 teachers across the country and abroad. And uh, this is a great sense of fulfillment that we are supporting and mentoring teachers. I would like to take leave and I would take the permission of all the panelists and the audience 
to yeah. end the program. thank you once again sir for providing us a, a platform to express our thoughts or share our thoughts thank you thank you so much sir thank it you was all. interacting with everybody thank you and have a good weekend thank you thank, thank you. you thank you sir thank you sir uh, thank you all and thanks sir namaste for giving me such a wonderful opportunity thank you thank you sir